to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Tortoise. It's the Tier 9 British Tank Destroyer. It's located on the northeast spawn of Highway, and this one's under the command of Probo Bob. Now, the Tortoise is a design for an assault tank that was supposed to destroy the Siegfried line, but unfortunately, it was designed too late to actually take part. Now, the one in the game is armed with a 120mm gun. You can see down here it's capable of doing 400 alpha and penetrating 259mm far more standard ammo. And with the APCR, it goes to 326. It's quite a good design, it does have a huge amount of armor. Uh, it's got the second highest DPM in the game after the Badger at tier 9. Well, after the Badger at tier 10, I should say. And it's got the fourth highest hit pool in terms of the uh, health. It has very thick armor, great accuracy, and good aim time too. The only drawback is it's quite slow, as you're seeing here. 20 kilometers an hour top speed, and that's mainly down to the weight. It's 81 tons fully loaded. Now it does have a very good arc of fire as well. 20 degrees either side of the center line, so a 40 degree arc in total. Um, that's very good, really, if you're thinking about it. I suppose the weakness of this thing is actually that cupola. Everyone knows about it. That's the uh, loader's cupola. And it's the loader that tends to die or get injured uh, whenever that uh, cupola gets penetrated. Now, it's very slow and low maneuverability. And it's got the third worst pen of any of the 120mm guns and expensive ammo as well and of course that large weak spot now you can also penetrate this tank from the rear and you can penetrate it from the side if you actually go specifically for the weak spots on the side of the vehicle which are towards the rear near the engine area now the enemy has been uh, spotted way down the uh, south in the city but it's taking Probo Bob ages to get down there. He's probably going to miss all the action. Hopefully he'll get there eventually. The engine was a Meteor engine, so it was actually um, a, a D-rated Rolls-Royce Merlin engine built for tanks, so no supercharger. 650 brake horsepower, it's a V12 petrol, and it had torsion bar suspension. If you've ever seen this at the Tank Museum at Bovington, it's very, very big and those tracks are incredibly wide, over a metre wide. It's a, it's a real beast when you actually see it up front. In fact, I do wonder if they would have been able to cross some of the bridges in Europe, because when you think about it, it's so heavy, it would have crushed some of the bridges altogether. Well, first hit from a cram bomb doesn't pen and he's now going to position himself on this corner so the cram bomb won't be able to get shots on him but he should be able to get shots on the cram bomb i have the feeling the cram bomb's given up trying he has got an apcr oh here we've got a target and oh well he did get a hit for 398 so he got a low roll there and he tried to get a shot into the cram bomb, but didn't get it because the guy was moving too quickly. But now he's got him, and that's a nice pen for 381. Low roll though. Just keep it up. And there goes the the bat chat. Okay, it's the strip K around here. There's the cram bomb. I think this is where he gets a bit of fun. He's got his first kill. Oh, he's got the strip by the rear. That one didn't pen. But now he can shoot at this uh, highest 3A. He's out the game. And the strip K is trying to get some damage, but he can't. Okay, what have we got over there? Chimera. He hit that guy in the tracks. Okay. What are they trying to do? The strip might decide to try and come around him. But he can't do that if the train's in the way. I'm not sure you can get through that gap. Hello. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> Three kills. 
and in fact actually the enemy have now abandoned the town because it's just too dangerous to be in here three kills very good work by probo bob oh rt yeah he did try to change course but he still got splashed for 332 in fact i think that might have been a direct hit on his front just have a quick check by looking around oh look at that it hit the mantlets now i don't think that would have penetrated the mantlet but it certainly did a fair bit of damage in fact it looks to be the premium he it's got the black box instead of the normal one okay so took him forever to get to the town but now he's proving his worth he's leading the charge and that's what you should do with a uh, tortoise because it is an assault tank destroyer that object 704 is regretting that he's facing the wrong way but he is trying to stop our guys from coming up the other direction and now these two the chimera goes down first that's fourth kill now the object 416 is going to take a few shots oh no he can get him now oh that was good his teammates actually managed to get enough damage and now we've got a t30 now the t30 is doing his best to close the different distance so he can stay underneath the uh, gun depression but it's not going to help him because this tank destroyer has 10 degrees and there goes the t30 there's only three enemies left and he's got five kills so he could get a top gun you can hear the engine straining as he's doing 20 kilometers an hour maximum speed towards the river there is an enemy rt up there somewhere it's an m53 m55 the same guy who hit him but can he hit this su-130 pm he's having to back up just to get enough elevation he could do it with one shot top gun he got a top gun and the m53 m55 is about to die He's gone. Now there's only one enemy left. It's the STB-1. He should be up there somewhere, but I doubt we're going to get up there by the time they killed him. But it was a nice game for Provo Bob because he proved how worth, how valuable the tortoise can be in the assault role. And there it goes. The STB-1's down and this game is a victory. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the second class tank of a Provo Bob in the Tortoise. He managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. He got a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points for his own vehicle, and he got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. And best of all, he picked up a battle hero medal. He got a top gun for getting at least six kills. His win eight from that one was 2,646, which is Unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score and see where he was. Well, the highest damage in the game actually went to the T-30 on our team, but he didn't get 20% of the enemy hit pool. He only got a Confederate and 3,921. The Leopard prototype managed 2,830. And Provo Bob managed 2,409 in his Tortoise with, of course, his Top Gun. The ELC Evan 90 got an Orlix medal in that battle, so obviously he was taking out higher tier opponents. And he got three of them in the end, so very well done by him. When it came to kills, yep, Provo Bob got that one easily. Six kills to him, three kills to the LC Evan 90. And then everyone else either had one kill or nothing at all. And when it came to base XP, he's got that one, 1,131. He's the only player to get over 1,000. The next highest being the T30 with 967. And the Leopard prototype managed 917. He fired 16 rounds in that game, got... 12 direct hits on the enemy and 9 penetrations. Yeah, it, I did say that its penetration isn't that great. Uh, but it is, and it is expensive ammo as well. But it does have great accuracy. He did get some nice shots in that game. 2,409 hit points of damage, of which 725 were at more than 300 meters. The longest shot being, of course, the SU-130PM, which he shot. He was up the other end of the hill. And yes, he got him from distance to get his top gun. Three hits received from the enemy, two of them were non-penetrations, and one hit by way of splash from the M53, M55, which did hit the mantlet, but it didn't pen. It just did a lot of damage because it was the premium HE. 440 hit points of damage blocked by armor. He spotted one enemy vehicle, damaged seven of the enemy, killed six, and did 1,273 hit points of spotting assist. He earned 44,384 credits from that game. 
55,000 for completing a mission, 99,384 altogether, and after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, still made a profit of 13,145 credits, 1,696 XP, 3,394 for completing a mission, and 5,090 experience points altogether. He says, Tortoise Top Gun. Well, yes, the thing is that, as he was saying, or so he was telling me, it, it was almost like it was taking him forever to get there, and he thought that the battle might be over by the time he did. But once you're there, a tortoise can be devastating to the enemy because it's one of those assault tank destroyers they can't ignore. And if they do ignore, or they pay for it, and it's one of those ones which can literally rumble over the enemy and just shrug off their shots and then take them out. So long as you don't get let the enemy get behind you, you're okay. Nice game, Provo Bob. Here's the Taurus armor profile, and you can see from the collision model that the armor is very, very thick on the front of the vehicle. Look at that. 273.1 millimeters impacted armor, but with the angling, it does go up. The upper plate is still 101.6, but it's so well angled, you actually get an effective 304. So um, not getting a shell through there if you're aiming horizontally. The frontal armor over here, 215.9 millimeters, but effective armor is 292. Over here, 273.1, but coming out 273.5. Yeah, um, that shell from the enemy RT, it hit a spot where the armor was 152.4 millimeters, and it's based as well with the mantlet. So uh, there was no chance of that one getting through because 376.6 millimeters. Yeah, that's not going to get through. And then, of course, we've got the weak spot, which is this turret here, which is only 171.5 millimeters. And so you can penetrate this if you've got enough power. Let's have a quick look at the live model. Yeah, again, anywhere on the front of this vehicle. This is why this vehicle can bully other vehicles, because the only weak spot is this tiny area on the cupola. If you see the sides, though, you can easily penetrate the sides or the rear. But uh, if they angle slightly on the sides, just look at that. It becomes solid again, so very difficult to get through the armor on a tortoise. Let's have a quick look at modules. Now, with the modules, the thing is that the uh, modules are spread nicely apart as well. We can see the gunner sitting right next door to the gun on the right-hand side. The driver is actually on the far left-hand side of the vehicle, actually within the main uh, vehicle itself in the main casement uh, casement of the body or, or um, uh, what they call it the citadel of the body and you can see he's actually got viewports up high just above him is the loader there's one of the loaders he's operating that machine gun hatch and that's the guy who gets killed most often in the game the other of the loaders is behind the breach he's got a big amarack behind him We've got the uh, radio operator at the front on the opposite side to the driver, and the tank command is on the right, uh, just behind him. And there's a deep store of ammo right down in the middle of the tank, uh, but very difficult to get at. You'd have to aim between the bogies to get it. And right at the back, of course, we've got the engine surrounded by or sandwiched by two fuel tanks either side. So, uh, yes, this thing is very difficult to kill. And you can see, even with the um, transmission being right at the front of the vehicle and with the torsion bar suspension uh, right on the floor all the way through, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult to get a shot in through the front of the vehicle, even through that front plate, even if you could. But I don't think you can. Um, so this is a very, very well-defended assault tank. Uh, the only problem, of course, is if you get behind it, then you should be able to penetrate the rear of the vehicle. And of course, then you've got that Amarack right in front of you there, or you've got the engine and the fuel tanks, and that should be able to set the thing off. Uh, or you just aim for the back of the vehicle. If you can get the back at the side of the vehicle, then you should be able to set off the Amarack because it's right, right at the very back uh, next to where it goes up at the rise there. So uh, that's the modules on the Tortoise. Well, I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.